Shalom, Rastafari. Want to touch on Sukkot, right? Sukkot is coming forward. Yadas Baal, speaking of uh, booths, it was called tabernacles and booths. Now, we're beginning off right here with our brief presentation, kind of an update, you know, preparing for uh, Sukkot. Right, and what is a uh, Sukkot? What does Sukkot mean? Well, let's first of all go to the scriptures um, briefly right here. And we also want to touch on today's um, psalm, right? The psalm for today. And let's get a today check, right? Today is for Monday, the second day, Monday, or the Senyo, like Senyo, Sinai, Sina. Right, um, Senyo, um, October 6th, 2014. And our dearly Davidic Mesmora Dawit, the Negus reading is, uh, Silsa or Psalm 60, right? 60 and 61, actually. Remember how we double it up. But there's a key word that we were, um, reminded about and we give thanks, um, by, Xavier's hidden ones, you know, reminded I of a key word that's in this psalm, Psalm 60, and that's in verse 8, or actually uh, it would be, I think, verse, um, that's in the Hebrew Bible, um, it would be verse, uh, well, actually verse 6, verse 6, where it speaks about Elohim, or God, El Elohim, have spoken in his holiness, Kedisana, Kedisana, in his holiness, I will rejoice, I will divide Shechem and meet out the valley of Sukkot, right? Or Sukkot, right? Which is Psalm 60 and 6. So we have a Sukkot sign and the next uh, feast day, holy day for our commemoration, our memorial, our reflection on in Yeshua HaMoshiach is Sukkot, right? And that's coming up in this 2014 cycle, October, October 8th, right? Which is beginning the eve, the Erev, the eve. And that is um, the indwelling the tabernacles, which is known as tabernacles for eight days, Right, eight days, and we're right now working on updating, you know, the link, some of the reading references at Rastafari Groundation, right? So be sure to check the Rastafari Groundation, the RTG um, site, get a subscription as well, sign up, um, and um, stay in tune in the spirit and the truth of the of the, the teaching of His Majesty, of Kedamawi Hada Selassie, and I, Godfather and King of Kings. Now, why this is so important is because that verse, uh, verse 6, we have saw Sukkot there before. And it was interesting because that's actually found by Amrinya in the Amharic as well, right? So let's move some of this on the side for a moment, right? Why is the flag here? Because this psalm, let's just touch on it right here. This psalm for this day, right, leading up to within the five days between the Yom Kippur, Astesrio, the Suryet Ken, the Day of Atonement, and, uh, you know, uh, Gemar, Khatema, uh, uh, Toba, right, Toba, or Tova, a good, a good sealing, right, or completion, right, a good sealing. Um, for the eye, you know, being sealed and written in his book, in the book of life. So let's just read the psalm right here. This is Psalm 60. This is today's Yazare, right? Uh, Mesmor, the Negus, the reading of it. To the chief musician upon the Shushan Edut, Miktam, a teaching, uh, Zedavid, or Dawit, a teaching of David. To teach. Actually, Miktam is a teaching. When he strove with Aram Naharayim and with Aram Zoba. Now, it's interesting because Aram, right, is speaking about like Mesopotamia. And we know what's been going on over there 
with those uh, goddess worshipers, right? When Eoab, right, the moon worshipers, right? I'm not speaking about Looney Tunes. We're speaking about bloody lunacy in this blood moon time. And you have to also know that uh, it's on the 10th that the blood moon in the midst of this Sukkah and Sukkot season, right? When Eoab, Joab returned and smote of Edom, right? When he smote Edom in the valley of Saul, 12,000, right? 12,000 when he smote them in this valley of salt, right? So it begins off, let's go right here, get the Hebrew, right? Side by side right here. It begins off right in the Hebrew, yeah, Elohim. This is oh God, right? Elohim. Elohim. Thou hast cast I and I off. Thou hast scattered I and I. Thou hast scattered us. The eye has been displeased. O oh, turn thyself to I and I again. The eye, thou, hast made the earth to tremble. Thou hast broken it. Heal the breaches thereof, for it shaketh. Thou hast shewed thy people, I and I, black Hebrew, Israelites, Ethiopian Hebrews, the redeemed at home and abroad, hard things. The eye has made I and I to drink the wine of astonishment. Wow. But here's the key. Thou has given a banner, right? Thou has given a banner, even the banner of the lion of the tribe of Judah to them that fear, that reverence, that respect the eye, that it may be displayed because of the truth. Selah. Selah si hai. That thy beloved may be delivered. That thy beloved may be delivered, save Yeshua, Teshuva, right? Save with thy right hand, and hear I and I. Elohim have spoken in his idleness, his holiness. I will rejoice. I will divide Shechem and meet out, measure out the valley of Sukkot. Gilead is mine. Manasseh is mine. Ephraim also is the strength of mine head, mine ras, Tafari. Judah, Yehuda, is I lawgiver, the lion of the tribe of Judah. Awo, amen. Moab, the Moabites, the Moors, is my washpot. Over Edom, you know they are, will I cast out my shoe. Philistia, triumph thou because of I. Who will bring me into the strong city? Who will lead me into Adam? Will not the I, O Elohim, which has cast I and I off, O thou, O Elohim, which didst not go out with I and I armies, give I and I help from trouble, for vain is the help of man. Through Elohim, I and I, we shall do valiantly. For he it is that shall tread, trod down I and I enemies. You know how we do it. We're going to double up on this. So we're going to read 61 too. All right. So 60 and 61 go together like a couple. To the chief musician upon Nigana, Nigana, right? Nigana, a psalm, a mizmor of Davi. Hear I cry, O Elohim, attend to I prayer. From the end of the earth will I cry to the eye. When I heart is overwhelmed, lead I to the rock that is higher than I, for the eye has been a shelter for I and I, and a strong tower from the enemy. I will abide, dwell in thy tabernacle forever. 
I will trust in the covert of thy wings. Selah. For the eye, O Elohim, has heard I vow. The eye has given I the heritage of those that reverence thy name. O Kedamawi, Haila Salasi, Be Yeshua. Thou will prolong the king's life, the Negus's life, and his years as many generations. He shall abide before Elohim forever. O oh, prepare mercy and truth, which may preserve him. So will I and I sing praises, Isis, to thy name, to the name of Kedamawi Hala Selassie, Ja Rastafari forever, that I may daily perform I and I vow. Amen and Amen. So Sukkot, right? So this is the revelation concerning this banner. And we find this elsewhere in the scripture. It says that when the enemy comes in like a flood, then Yahweh, he who be, who he be, his divine majesty will do what? He will lift up a banner, right? A standard, it actually says, but it's referring to this banner, the banner, a standard, look it up. A standard against the enemy, right? Against the enemy. Now, what does Sukkot have to do with it? Well, in the Psalm I just read, verse 4 of 61, it says, I will abide in thy tabernacle forever. I will trust in the covert, right? In the covert of thy wing, right? Of thy wings, in the covert, in the shelter of thy wings. Now, remember the woman that was given the, the wings like the eagle to fly into her place? This is speaking of holy Ethiopia as well. Right. But we'll return to this as we move forward. Right. Let's touch a little bit on Sukkot just briefly right here. First thing we're going to do is begin from the scripture. Right. Begin from the Torah. Right. And from Leviticus. Chapter 20. Is it 23? Yeah, 23, where it goes over the feast. Right. And here we have the feast of Yahweh tabernacles. A comparative study, Ezra 3 and 4, Zechariah 14, 16 to 19, and Revelation 21 and 3. But here's what it reads. It says, also in the 15th day of the seventh month, when ye have gathered in the fruit of the land, ye shall keep a feast to Yahweh, he who be who he be, seven days. On the first day shall be a Shabbat. So the first day of Sukkot in this time, the from the Day of Atonement, which was a Sabbath, and what's very interesting, it fulfills on a Sabbath. So we find that all of the high holy days in this particular season have have occurred and coincided with the Holy Shabbat. So both it is a Shabbat day, and because it begins that Moedim, that appointment with Yahweh. It is also a Shabbat day. So it says on the first day shall be a Shabbat and on the eighth day shall be a Shabbat. So it begins the eighth and the 16th, 17th, and we have a Shabbat there, right? And ye shall take you on the first day the bowls of goodly trees, bow, branches of palm trees and bowls of thick trees and willows of the brook. And ye shall rejoice before Yahweh Eloheka seven days. So those seven days in total, you know, it's eight, but it's the seven days. And at the eighth, well, it's going to explain this right here. Now, we have to recognize that according to the old covenant, we cannot fulfill this in the old covenant, but in the new, in the Brit Chadasha, in Yeshua, who is our atonement. Right? So this time of rejoicing, see how it all connects right here. In the, the Shem, Beshem Yeshua, right? And ye shall keep it a feast to Yahweh seven days in the year. It shall be a statute forever in your generations. Ye shall celebrate it in the seventh month. 
verse 42, ye shall dwell in booths seven days. All that are Israelites born shall dwell in booths. All that are born is Israelian. Let's bring this, we'll bring this forward right here to see how that connects. So here's what we're speaking about. Sukkot, right? Ha Elohim, Jah is I and I shelter. Yeshua, Isis, Christos is the living water of his majesty. Yeshua is the light of the world. Yeshua is preparing I and I and has prepared for I and I a permanent home. So Sukkot regards booths and tabernacles, right? Let's give a couple of examples then find all the examples but this is not a literal sukkah but it's in the sukkah style this is like the gojo right what we call it huts right ones will call it huts basically a sukkah is a hut which is a very interesting idea if we would you know meditate or expand on that right there so this is a beta israel hut or sukkah right that type of hut or sukkah so we can see that it is still real, right, with Israel. Israel. It's still real with Israel. Now, Sukkah or Sukkot is also, right, our uh, Thanksgiving. It's a time of Thanksgiving, right? It's a time of Thanksgiving. And this is also some Gojo's right here. We had some other pictures, but could not, could not readily find it for the recording of this one right here. So what we're going to do is just continue here let's see if we if any if any more of them have come up that we can show you some of the traditional and the um indigenous or african if you please examples of the so-called ethiopian examples we don't have it right here but basically it is a hut it is a booth right and you've seen it probably a million times they might call it tikul Right, but it's that basic shape, it's that basic idea. If you've seen any of them made, it is made in that same sort of way as Leviticus is describing, which brings a theological question. Like, did they stop at booths? Like when they were in the wilderness, right? And some even probably went off, right? But that's a whole other question right there. But let's go through this right here so we get a good overview. 42, verse 42 says, Ye shall dwell in booths seven days. All right, now there's a footer that we're going to read right here because this is speaking of the Feast of Tabernacles. And the Feast of Tabernacles is like Adonai's Supper for the church. So the Feast of Tabernacles, what is the Feast of Tabernacles likened to? Right? Well, the Feast of Tabernacles is likened to Adonai's feast, right? His, 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 his supper, that supper, the Lord's Supper, right, for the church. And the church is the called out ones. Both, it is memorial, it's for, it's for, it's for our memorial, it's a, for remembrance. And there's also a prophetic, right? There's a prophetic aspect of this. Right, as we find within the the shadows, you know, the Colossians says this right here. So don't condemn yourselves, brothers and sisters. It's not for us to seek to do it according to the old covenant, but in the new covenant, in the Moshiach, who is I and I high priest. Yeshua is I and I high priest. Otherwise, atonement would not be atonement. So Hebrews explains that aspect perfectly and we touched on a, a couple of, um, you know, going into a couple of points about that in a previous record. But we're going to seek to put this one up first, since there are a couple of days that one can at least prepare their hearts and minds. So it's not about the so-called literal outer doing, but understanding the types, understanding how the, the old was shadows, right? As the scripture says, and Paul teaches us were shadows. Right, with shadows and types. So here we have in here we have in uh Colossians, right? Colossians chapter chapter two, right, concerning the law, the Torah observances, some say were abolished in Christ. We prefer to say they were fulfilled. 
or we can fulfill them in Hamushia, with faith in Hamushia. It says right here from 2 and 14, blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us. This was not against us. Sukkot is not against us, which was contrary to us, speaking about the sacrificial types, and took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. The atonement, right? Atone at one man town. And having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a shoe of them openly, triumphing, right? Let's bring this into view again. Triumphing, right? Having triumphed over them. We're in Colossians chapter 2 at verse 15, verse 16. Here's the key. Let no man or allow no man therefore to judge you or really literally to I felt it about you to condemn you in meat in what you eat or in drink. It's not saying that you can eat that which is not kosher. That's not, you know, that's, you see, this is, these are things that need to be touched on. But concerning the observance of the holy day, let no man therefore judge or condemn you in meat, speaking of in food or in drink or in respect of a holy day. He was not saying that we are not to observe the holy day, but in the new covenant, right, being a change of law, therefore there must be a change of priesthood. There's a change of law as well, but it's according the new priesthood, the priesthood after the order of Melchizedek, Sedek, it's according to the pattern of Levi. So we study the pattern of Leviticus. So it says, make no man therefore judge or condemn you in in, in food or drink or in respect of an holiday or of the new moon, the Rosh Chodesh, or of the Sabbath days, the Sabbath. Now here's the key, verse 17, which are a shadow of things to come, but the body, the Akal, right? The, the body speaking of the church, right? The called out ones, is of Ha Moshiach. So that's a very important word there in Colossians 2 and 16. Don't allow men and people, therefore, to condemn you, right, in, you know, the food or the drink. Like, for example, Passover, right? Passover literally is unleavened bread. So if you find yourself eating some unleavened bread, don't allow yourself to condemn yourself if you are in Moshiach. Now, if you're trying to do it the way of the Old Testament, they don't have Yeshua Jews, then, well, this doesn't apply to you. But in the messianic way of the King of Kings in Christ, this is what applies Colossians 2 and 16. So we're studying this according to its type. This is why verse 42 says, we're in Leviticus 23 again, ye shall dwell, dwell, right? Remember the psalm that we just read, abide, also refers to dwell. I will abide in thy tabernacle forever, right? Under, I will trust, I will trust in the covert or under the, like the shadow of thy wings, right? And we have another psalm that speaks to that, um, that, that type, right? That type there. Ye shall dwell in booths seven days. All that are Israelites born, that are born Israelites, shall dwell in booths. Verse 43, that your generations may know. See, we've forgotten this because they, they, they cast the law, the law sheep of the house of Israel, so-called nigger, Negroes, black people, have cast this behind them. That's why all that has happened to us has happened to us. Right, and he was gracious and merciful, did not judge us as we deserve, right? Speaking of our ancestors and even us, that your generations may know that I made the children of Israel, the Dekik Israel, the Israel Lijoch, right, to dwell in booths, in huts, when I brought them out of the land. Of Egypt, could it be that some who came out with Moses, they went their own way? And that's why we find even Africans today still dwelling in huts some places. Could that be? All right. Anyway, I am, it says, Yahweh Eloheka, and Moses declared to the children of Israel the feast, the Moedim of Yahweh Eloheinu. Now, the footer says this right here, that the Feast of Tabernacles, 
mention from verses um, 34 actually to 44. Because if you go to 34, it says to speak to the children of Israel, the 15th day of this seventh month shall be the Feast of Tabernacles for seven days. On the first day shall be a holy convocation, a holy occasion, a Shabbat. Ye shall do no servile occupational labor therein. Seven days ye shall offer an offering made by fire to Yahweh. And on the eighth day shall be a holy convocation. So that's the eighth day after the seventh, right, to you. And ye shall offer an offering made by fire to Yahweh, to Jah. Rastafari. It is a solemn assembly, and ye shall do no servile occupational work therein. These are the feasts of Yahweh, he who be who he be, the Zavan Masik, Edomah, Selassie, for I and I and we, which ye shall proclaim, proclaim, we're seeking to proclaim it here, to be a holy convocation, or to be holy convocations, to offer an offering made by Faya to Yahweh, a burnt offering and a meat offering a sacrifice, and a drink offering, everything upon his day. Beside the Sabbaths of Yahweh, and beside your gifts, and beside all your vows, and beside all your free will offerings, which ye give to Yahweh, he who be who he be. Now, the footer says this, that the Feast of Tabernacles, also known as Sukkot, is like or likened to Adonai's Adonai's Supper, or the Lord's Supper for the church, both memorial and prophetic. Memorial as to the redemption, we remember the redemption out of Egypt, as we look forward to the redemption out of this spiritual Egypt, Sodom and Egypt, according to Revelation. Verse 43 of Leviticus 23 points that out. Now, it's prophetic as to the kingdom, the Mengist Senbet, or the Malkut Shabbat, the Israel, of Israel, after, after her regathering, after Israel's regathering, after we, the once lost but now found Beta Israel at home and abroad, after our regathering in spirit and in truth and restoration when the feast then will become again right it will be again become memorial and it's not a memorial for israel alone but for all nations or for the nations you know that survived the judgment right all nations zechariah 14 verses 16 to 21 also speaks of the importance of Sukkot or ingathering. Now, by studying the Amharic, when we study the Amharic of this uh, psalm, Psalm 60, right, which is actually today's psalm, it's the sixth day, right, and then we have two more days and then we'll begin the Sukkot, right? But interesting was this revelation that was shown to me. I'll, I'll share a brief of it is from verse 6, 60 and 6, where it says, Elohim have spoken in his what? In his holiness. Why right? he says, be holy, right? Be holy as our Abba Father is holy, set apart, right? Not conformed to the world, not thinking as the world, but learning his thoughts and thinking his way according to the, the hearing of the faith of Yeshua, how Moshiach, his son. So Elohim, ha Elohim, Eloheinu, Avinu, Abinu, Sheba Shemayim, our Father, have spoken in His holiness. And what does He say? I will rejoice. So this is time for us to joy. He says, I will divide Shechem. Now, here in the Tehillim of the Jews, they have a footnote right here. They say that the remainder of the psalm occurs again in the second half of Psalm 108. So if we compare this portion of the psalm to Psalm 108, I wonder whether that psalm comes up again. Let's go to 108 for a moment. Because they said this actually compares to Psalm 108. So let's go see it for ourselves. And we see it right here where in 108 
108 and 7, it says, God and Elohim have spoken in his holiness. I will rejoice. I will divide Shechem and meet out or measure out the valley of Sukkot. Now, it's interesting because the revelation was shown that Shashemeni is a valley. So if our patriarchs, if we had only known this, but now that we know better, we can do better. But, the, but his majesty gave us a valley. It's interesting because if you look at Shechem, Shechem is on the west side of Jordanos, Jordan. And then we have Sukkot, the valley is on the east side. So it's interesting because it divides Shechem. Now Shechem or Sekem comes from Shechem, Shechem, which means a burden. He right? says, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Heavy burden carrying that Shechem. He will divide the Shechem, right? divide the labors of the ministry of his majesty because many hands make light work. Right? So he would divide that burden, and that burden is on the western side, Shechem, Sekem, and we are in where? We are in the west. But now on the east side, Sukkot, the valley, Shashemani, right, was to be measured out, and he measured it out. But then men and people had their ideas. But let's first re return to his ideas. So we see that this part of the psalm does repeat itself, as it says right here, 108 verses uh, 7 to 12 are like Psalm 60 verses 7 to 12. So we have a kind of a mirror image, all right? So let's take note of that. But they go on to say that God spoke in his holiness. He made a promise, right? It says the guarantee being his attribute of holiness, which rules out any possibility of the pledge remaining unfulfilled. So because Abba Father has, has sworn Right in his holiness, right there is no doubt, and there should be no doubt that he will fulfill, right as he has sworn it, right he will fulfill it, he will do it. That's why you see the comparison made between, you know, not trusting in mortal men, men and people, but trusting in He who be His divine Majesty, trusting in our Abba Father. Right, so it says elsewhere, Elohim is said to swear by His holiness. So we have other areas where, where Elohim, where Abinu, Avinu, Abuna, right, Zebes Samayat, our heavenly Father, He swears by His own holiness, which is like the highest. You know, He can't swear by anybody. You know, like any of us, because you know we have shown human beings falling short you know, of the glory, not to be very faithful. He can only swear by his holiness, which is a way of saying he swear by his son, whom he has given as atonement, that at one man tau, that at one man, one man's cross, one man's mark, that mark of righteousness. We find him swearing by his holiness in Psalm 89 and 36 in Amos four and two. It says that I will exalt. Now this translation understands the I, the I here to be David or Dawit, the well beloved. Now this is there's nothing corresponding to that in the Hebrew. And it is better they say to render I will exalt, I will divide, and the subject of this being Elohim, our Father, that he will remember that that Yeshua, that, that, that Christ, that Adonai spoke through David, because David was a man after his own heart. So when David says this, he is really giving voice, voca, vowing, giving voice to Adonai's own heart, his, his, his own heart for his people, right? In this sense, the verse continues the poet's reflection upon the past. The poet, speaking of David, he recalls the time when Elohim was Israel's ally, when the king of kings was the lost sheep's ally in the conquest of the Kana'anu, picturing him as the leader, right, of the army, <laughs> field marshal, right, the leader of the army who assured 
the people victory, telling them, I will exalt in the overthrow of the enemy and apportion his land to you. Right? This is why we should have no fear about whatever goes on in the East, my brothers and sisters. We should focus on his fulfilling his will, right? Where we are, where we are, right? Where we're at to take us to the next level. He will guide us. His Holy Spirit will guide us here. Shechem, as we said earlier, representing the territory west of Jordanos. So this will be Shechem, the burden in the West, and Sukkot, right? Speaking and be speaking of the land on the east side, right? On the east side. I wanted just to get into some of the detail, right? Some of the detail right there of that. And let me just go forward here, 108, and see if any additional notes or whether they point us to, I think, 108 was the Thanksgiving and prayer, right? 108 is the Thanksgiving and prayer. Right, and this particular psalm, Psalm 60, is is called in the shadow of defeat. Right? In the shadow of defeat. It was a time, right? It was a time of uh national humiliation. So let's bring this up just to close this out right here. Right? Once again, Sukkot right here, and that banner. The banner is very significant. Right, as this theme. Let's put it up here because it says that his banner over I was love. You find that in Song of Songs. So it's his banner, right? He has given a banner of salvation, right? And we know that Sukkot, it represents, it's, it's a type of Adonai's supper, right? That supper, that communion, right? That agape, that love feast. Right, that dwelling, having his word dwelling in us so that we can dwell together, right, in spirit and in truth. That's the key. That's the key to I and I, Ionity. Yeshua is the key to our unity in spirit and in truth. But this psalm right here, just briefly, is a time of national humiliation, which is mirrored in this composition. We can see that. Right, also with uh, Ethiopia, Israel, right, in this very time. Ethiopia, let's say, black Israel in this time is a time of humiliation, right? From such a time to such a time, we are in a time of humiliation. The first shall be last and the last shall be first. Now, in the midst of a campaign, the army, right, the army, that salvation army of his majesty, had suffered a reverse. Now the mezmor or the mizmor, right? As some of the Hebrews pointed, the mizmor, mezmor, it reveals the humbled mood of the people. Hoping, right? Which is a confident expectation of good that Ha Elohim, Avinu Shabbat Shemaim, would retrieve their fortunes, our barakat, and turn this seeming defeat that it seems that we're at. I mean, look what's going on in the world with the righteous. It, it seems like a defeat, right? The seeming defeat turned this defeat into victory. Now, the title of this psalm, it points to the what? The Edomite War. There was the Edomite War in which David, right? And his majesty, Kermawi Halasalasi, the tabernacle of David, was engaged and a particular incident is singled out, which, however, tells of success, ultimate success rather than failure. So this psalm is a type as we're going into Sukkot, right? The Mizmor was probably, they say, composed immediately before this exploit, which turned the scale. So those who have studied this psalm, Psalm 60, they've come to the conclusion that First, the song went forward, and then they battled and got victory over the enemy. But what I like to share coming forward is the is speaking of the banner. Just a little bit more on the banner, right? So if you will, let's just touch on the banner right here, this banner of salvation, right? This banner that is given, right? So let's bring this up right here. 
and let's make this a little bit um okay let's let's do this like this let's make this a little bit just so it fits within within the frame right here right so we'll move this over we'll move this up right and all right all right I said picture that's a thousand words so we'll put this right here here we go all right how's that okay so let's go to verse um uh, verse 5 to 11 right but the first part of verse uh was it verse um actually verse 4 where it says thou has given a banner to them that fear thee that reverence thee that respect thee that it may be displayed because of truth, right? So that banner is given to us to be displayed because of truth. Now, the footnote from the Tehillim, this particular psalm, you know, in the Jewish Mizmor, the Tehillim, the book of the Psalter, there's a footnote here that says this, and it's in the subset that's called Hope of Victory in Elohim's, in God's Assurance, and in speaking of banner, here's what it says, a paragraphical I want to share with you. It says, a banner to them that fear thee, that fear thee. Now, when we look at the word, mefrad, tefari, tefari, ras, tefari, the head to be reverenced, tiferet, the 10th chakra, the ras, the crown chakra, you know, we put that all together and we see that in light of the word, we can see this clearer to be a revelation of ras, tefari. A banner to them that reverence, that respect thee. Here's what it says. It says, in the darkness of the nations, humiliation, right? Because we are a redeemed beta Ethiopian Hebrew Israelite nation. That in the darkness, in the ignorance, in this time of great ignorance of I and I nation, of Israel's humiliation, right? The psalmist, speaking of David, Dawit, Right, Nagus Dawit, he perceives, right, that means the spiritual vision pierces through this, this almost triple darkness, a ray of hope by reflecting on the Kedem, reflecting on the past, right? Elohim, the true and living God, had summoned Israel and put his name upon Israel, right, who acknowledged his sovereignty. All right, we're speaking of the sovereignty of His Majesty, Kedemawi Hala Selassie, to His service. Right? The teaching of His Majesty, the ministry of the King of Kings in Christ, and so to speak, presented them. So the sovereign, the King of Kings, has presented us in His sovereignty to His service. Right? To His service. And so to speak, presented I and I with the banner, right? The banner of his cause, of his cause, right? Which they were, I and I are, to hold aloft for the purpose of guiding other peoples to his truth, to his truth. And so when you go forward to the next verse, it says that thy beloved thy beloved may be delivered, right? So this banner is given for a purpose. The purpose is that the beloved ones love and be loved. The beloved ones may be delivered, rescued, saved. It says, save with thy right hand, right? Toshia, Toshia, right? Save with thy right hand and answer I. The footer here says, that thy beloved may be delivered by recognizing Israel, right? Ethiopia, Israel. Are you not as the children of the Ethiopians unto me, O children of Israel? By recognizing Israel as his what standard bearers, he had displayed his love for them. Upon that fact, the psalmist bases his plea. And upon that fact, I and I also base I and I plea to Gurmawi Kedamawi Hala Salasi in the name of Yeshua HaMoshiach. Amen. Amen. So brothers and sisters, stay tuned. 
um, Sukkot, rejoice, right? Time of tabernacle, time of indwelling. Allow this time to go over the readings and, and allow the word to tabernacle and abide, right? Abide within the eye in spirit and in truth. In fact, there's one more verse. The Holy Spirit said, let me touch on this, this verse right here. Hopefully I'll be able to find this particular verse. This verse where, you know, Yeshua spoke about his words, right? His words abiding. The idea of abiding, tabernacling, and dwelling are all key. And here we have found it. Um, mm, okay, it's verse, uh, it's John 15 and 7. So a word for this Sukkot. A key word, an operative word. Yeshua HaMoshiach says, if, that means it's a choice. We can choose to hear or forbid. He says, if, it could be a yea or a nay. If, it could be a awon or a delem, right? A yes or a no. If, that's the key. You have to recognize, when you find that word if, you have to take a moment and decide, right? Because he says, if ye, speaking of y'all, we all. If we abide in him, he says, if ye abide in me, if we abide in he, and he says, and my words abide, abide mean to spend the night, to dwell, to tabernacle, as it is said from the beginning of Johannes's of John's gospel of grace, when he says, um, um, and the word became flesh and dwelt and abided and tabernacled amongst us, right? And we beheld, beholding, right? Behold, if ye abide in me and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will and it shall be done to you. That, 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 is, that, that is a strong word right there. First Peter one and uh one and uh twenty one and twenty three right one and twenty three says being born again right we being born again not of corruptible seed but of incorruptible by the word of Ha Elohim. So we have the corruptible seed speaking of the physical seed of man, right? But then we have the incorruptible, which is the word, the davar, ha Elohim, the word of Elohim, which liveth and abideth forever. So his word is, you know, the, the Bible, the letter of the law is dead, right? That's what Paul says, but the spirit give life. So how do you make this dead letter spirit? You put it in your heart, you put it in your mind, you put it in your mouth, right? And you speak it and you have faith in it. Last verse, 1 John 2 and 14 says, I have written to you, fathers, I have spoken to you, brothers and sisters and mothers, because ye have known him, because ye have known him, that is from the beginning, from the Bereshit, right? The Bereshit, the Bereshit, the Bereshit. Bereshith, as they say, right? But Berasi, which is the beginning, or we could say the book of Genesis, but in the beginning, right? The Mejameria Malet. I have written to you, young men, because ye are strong. So this is for the young men, right? The young men of the King of Kings in Christ, because ye are strong. And, here's the key, and... The word of Elohim, the word of the true and living sustainer abideth in you. It dwells, it tabernacles in you and ye have overcome the wicked one. So which one comes first? First, the word abiding in I and I and then that victory as Psalm 60, you know, the rhema. This is a rhema word. Psalm 60 so clearly points that out to us. And that particular verse of measuring out, 
the valley of Sukkot. So, brothers and sisters, more to come. This is just a quick word right here that we want to share with those who are willing and able to receive it. So, once again, Shalom Rastafari of His Majesty's Christ, Yeshua HaMoshiach.